Crimson Trace now offers a complete line of electronic sights, ranging from a fixed magnification battle sight to reflex sights with the latest power management features. Purpose built and versatile. Find yours at crimsontrace.com. If you set the combination locks to 308, 357, or 3006, you're in the right place. It's Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Call 866-TALK-GUN. All right, before we get to our guest, uh, Dave has called in. He's, uh, I guess, in Massachusetts, heading to New York on line one. Hey, Dave, thanks for pulling over on the side of the road so you could update us. What's going on, man? Hey, Tom. I uh, wish I could have pulled over, but we don't have a rest area for another eight miles. But, ah, okay. Uh, Go ahead. I live, I live in northern New York, and the St. Lawrence County and Town Second Amendment Sanctuary Group will be meeting with the St. Lawrence County Board of Legislators at their regularly scheduled Monday meeting tomorrow evening, February 3rd at 6 p.m. at the courthouse in Canton, mm -hmm. New York. We ask all Second Amendment believers and all freedom lovers to show up and express your desire to turn St. Lawrence County into a sanctuary where Emperor Cuomo's ill-thought-out safe act plan will not have any uh, strength there. We're asking what? for you to come out and support us. What are you asking for? You're asking for them to declare they're not going to enforce the law? We, we, we wish, but we ask for a Second Amendment sanctuary like the movement that's going on in Virginia, Illinois, Kentucky, and other states, mm -hmm. that they just leave us alone. In uh, northern New York, we have nothing much in common with the people in New York City or Albany. We're a rural county, the largest county in the state, a lot of hunters, a lot of sportsmen, a lot of right. target shooters. Uh, when, when, help is, uh, when help is needed, you got to wait half an hour for somebody to show up you know, with a badge because right. we're our own uh, immediate... Uh, responders. We can't wait for first responders. We live way out in the country and all that. All right. Tell them one more time where and when. Monday evening, 6 p.m. at the St. Lawrence County Courthouse in Canton, New York, 48 Court Street. Be there and keep <laughs> your powder dry, gentlemen. I love it. Thank you so much, Dave. I appreciate it. Drive safely. Good stuff. Uh, in just a bit, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about uh, <laughs> how the, uh, the gun banners lie, lie, lie. One just got caught. Oh, my. I love it when they get caught so publicly with their lies. It is unbelievable. We'll, we'll give you that in, in just a minute. But first, let me bring in here Sarah Joy Albrecht. Uh, she's the founder and president of Hold My Guns, also an NRA range safety officer. Sarah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Okay. Do you prefer Sarah Joy or Sarah? You can call me Sarah. I, when, I, when my name's in print, I always use my full name but please call me Sarah. Okay, will do. All right, I mean, the obvious question is, what is Hold My Guns? Thank you. Um, so Hold My Guns is a nonprofit organization, and our mission is to connect uh, firearm owners with voluntary, private, off-site storage, storage options, and we're using our national network of partnering gun shops and FFLs. So if a person is experiencing a personal crisis, or a time of need, such as um, maybe they're being deployed and they don't want their firearms just left vacant in their home, they mm. can take their firearms to one of our storage partners and store it. Um, and it's completely voluntary. And this is a really great way for us to just be vigilant and responsible and honestly sidestep some of the legislation that we've seen coming through. What I think I hear you saying is that, and this is, I've seen outgrowth throughout the Second Amendment community of trying to help those who might, we're, we're trying to reduce suicide numbers. I mean, we want to help yeah. each other as much as we can, and that, that that's what this sounds like. Is that where we, we are here? It is, Tom. Um, honestly, the idea for this came after we lost an 18-year-old family friend um, to a suicide with a firearm. And as a range safety officer, um, friends in my community came to me and they said, Sarah, what can we do about this? And so I just really brainstormed hard and um, got some advice from friends. I met with attorney Joshua Prince here in Pennsylvania, and we came up with an idea to store firearms in gun shops so that if someone is going through a personal crisis, whether it's the gun owner themselves or, in, you know, if it's a family member that they can take a break from lethal means 
discreetly, privately, voluntarily, and get the help that they need. And that way, um, you know, it, it keeps people safe. But then when they believe it's time to bring the firearm back in, then they can just go pick it up. And it's based on a consignment transaction, which is an everyday transaction in a gun shop. So it really is a solution that is very scalable. Um, it's utilizing existing storage, existing gun shops, and, you know, instead of building armories. And the really cool thing, too, is that it really puts gun shops in a light of being um, a beacon in the community. And, and it really rewrites that narrative so that people see gun shops as, hey, this is a place that cares about our community. They're willing to help people. And they're doing things to really make sure that everyone stays safe. So, you know, as a range safety officer, we talk about, like, safety with proficiency and defending yourself and things like that. But there's right. also that important aspect of self-governance in all aspects of your life, including mental health or, you know, just making sure that everything's safe at home. Yeah, and think people have temporary things going on in their lives, and they may want to say, look, I just, I'd like for somebody else to hold my guns or our guns. Here's a question for you. If you do that, take it to sure. a gun store. Uh, when you come back to get them, do you have to go through the background check to pick up your own guns? You do. Uh, the firearms are yours. They um, they are just being stored at the gun shop. But in order for you to take it out of their A&D logbook, you do have to fill out that background check. Okay. And that's just how gun shops work. You know, in order to function in a regulated um, business environment, you do have to be compliant with their um, their regulations. And that's that is built into our system so that we can operate in gun shops. Okay. I uh, also want to mention, you went by it very quickly, but I caught it. When you said you're working with Joshua sure. Prince, my ears perked up because he is one of the rock stars of the Second Amendment uh, litigation side, and he just won a massive case in Pennsylvania. We'll okay. talk about that a little later on. So if you're working with Joshua Prince, all of a sudden you got my attention going, okay, this is a really good effort. He's amazing. He is um a brilliant man, and, and he cares about um, our rights, and that's why it was very important for me to work with him and not just, um, you know, any random attorney. Um, I also want to mention that he just has a very generous heart. He's currently matching donations on our GoFundMe, which is GoFundMe.com, H-M-G-O-R-G, and he's matching up to $5,000 through uh, February 7th, I believe. So wow. that just underscores that he's not just you know, your typical attorney, he really, really cares about protecting gun rights, and he cares about community efforts to um, to protect those rights as well. Let me ask you, uh, just occurred to me, this is also a counter to the red flag laws, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh -huh. so, yes, it is. You know, when you practice self-governance, it really undermines the need for anyone else to try to step in. And so, our hope is that people, when they notice things are starting to go sideways, that, you know, they're like, hey, let's let's just take care of this. And that way, when they go to their medical or mental health professional and, they, and they're asked um, if they are, you know, hey, are there any firearms in your home? You can honestly say no. Um, the cool thing is that we're actually noticing that medical and mental health professionals are, they're experiencing a knowledge gap about gun culture, and they're mm -hmm. concerned about the way that they talk to their patients so that they're turning them off to getting mm -hmm. treatment. And so we've actually had some um, med medical and mental health professionals say, hey, can we refer people to you instead of just automatically confiscating? And their thinking is from a clinician standpoint that if you can create self-determination in your patients as opposed to a relationship of animosity <laughs> with right. your clinician, um, that it would actually give more favorable outcomes for their treatment. So we're really excited about that, too, that we're actually changing the way that um, medical professionals, mental health professionals are interacting with their patients. And I'm sure at this point you're, you've gotten some pushback from some folks in the gun community on this. I have. Um, that's a great, great point there. Um, the typical objection is why would anyone else I would want anyone else to store my firearms, and you know, honestly, that's that's something that um, that I would struggle with too. However, if I knew that I was in a situation where, you know, I might be up against things going so bad that I would have to deal with the red flag law type stuff, mm -hmm. and not only lose my property but lose my rights, um, then it would be appealing to me. And so I just encourage people. You know, this is an option. It's not something we're telling everybody to do. But if you find yourself in the situation, we want to um, facilitate that you can take a break, break from lethal means and not get the authorities involved. And we really believe if you're proactive that you could do that. And that sidesteps 
red flag laws. It also sidesteps laws that would um, criminalize you if you don't have your firearm locked up or right. if your firearm is uh, stolen. So, like, if someone is uh, deployed and they know that their firearms will be sitting at home, then they can store them at their local gun shop so that hmm. no one has access to them. And, again, that sidesteps laws that are being put forth that, you know, if your firearm is stolen, then you're responsible for any crimes that are committed with that sure. firearm. So it really it sidesteps multiple um, types of legislation. Okay, and the website is holdmyguns.org, and on Facebook, look up Hold My Guns. Hold My Guns Org, right? Uh, Hold My Guns Org, correct. Yeah. Hold My Guns Org on Facebook and holdmyguns.org on uh, on the web. Sarah, thank you so much. It is uh, innovative, and uh, I appreciate people who are looking for new ways uh, of facing these challenges. And I know a lot of people are again saying, well, that's not for me. Well, it may not be for you. But if it is for you, then it may be very, very important. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Tom. All righty. All right, 866-TALK-GUN. When we come back, yes, another gun ban advocate got caught in his lies. We shouldn't put things <laughs> on the Internet when people can catch you. We'll have uh, a little bit more about that when we come back. Brownells.com is your home for all things firearms. Looking for a retro rifle? How about the BRN 180 or 180S? Named one of SHOT Show's best products of 2019. Visit Brownells.com for guns, ammo, reloading equipment, or anything you need to customize your firearm. And enjoy the industry's only guaranteed forever satisfaction policy. To stay up to date with the latest and best deals from Brownells, text BRN to 556-223. Visit GunTalk.com slash win to enter Gun Talk's current giveaway brought to you by Sig Sauer. Four grand prize winners will receive one of the following. The new Sig Sauer Cross Bolt Action Rifle, Sig's BDX Ballistic Data Exchange System, the P320 X5 Legion Pistol, or the Sig P320 X Full Romeo 1 Pro Pistol. Enter now through February 14th at GunTalk.com slash win. Since 1937, Ducks Unlimited has led the charge on wetlands and waterfowl conservation. Wetlands reduce the effects of flooding and recharge our drinking water. But perhaps most importantly, they allow us to experience what makes the outdoors so great. Band together to rescue our wetlands. Another one bites the dust. I have said for many, many years, so there's two parallel thoughts I'm going to sharing with you right now. One is they really do hate us. They don't hate guns. People say, why do they hate guns? No, they don't hate guns. They hate you. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But also, I've, I've said for years, you cannot push a gun control agenda without lying. Everything you say is a lie. All the quotes they put up, all the stats they put up, everything they say is a lie. They make up stuff. They fudge the numbers. Murders are down by half over the last 20 years. Accidental shooting deaths of children are down to the lowest number that the National Safety Council has ever recorded. More people are killed with fists and feet than they are with semi-automatic rifles or any rifles of all types. Huh. But yet we're told there's this epidemic of gun violence. It's gone down by half, but there's an epidemic, right? And that these weapons of war are used everywhere, except that more people are killed with fists and feet than they are with these rifles. So here's another one. We've got uh, Dr. Joseph Sack Sackran, S-A-K-R-E-N. John Hopkins surgeon, and he's an ardent advocate of gun control. He has been involved in the gun control movement for years. So... <clears throat> And I swear this sounds very much like that Jesse Smollett fake hate crime hoax thing. He claimed that uh, he received a threat in the form of a cartoon image of a handgun on a piece of paper placed on his car's windshield. And he posted it on Twitter. And there's this piece of paper. It's underneath his car's windshield. He took a picture of it right there, the way he found it. 
and it's got a picture of a, a cartoon picture of a gun pointing like right at the person who's looking at this image. And it says, the end is near. Clearly a threat. Clearly a lethal threat. In other words, you gun control people. Only problem with this is if you look at the image, this photograph that he put on Twitter, of this piece of paper that was supposedly left under his windshield wiper of his car. In the reflection of the windshield, you see the car is in his garage. Think about that. The car is inside his garage. Nobody came in there and put that underneath his windshield wiper. He did that. And then there's another photograph of him holding this piece of paper. Supposedly, he reported this to the police. Hate crime. Threats. Doesn't even look like the same piece of paper. Like maybe printed a couple of copies. I don't know. Well, after about a day of people going, really? Dude. <laughs> he took it down. <sighs> Making up threats. You know, it's a self-aggrandizement thing. And the reason I say that they always do this is because they always do this. Let's jump in the Wayback Machine and set it to 10 years ago. 10 years ago. The year is, no, I'm sorry, 20 years ago. The book is Arming America, Origins of a National Gun Culture. It was an important book. It was written by historian Michael Belisle. It was about the American gun culture. 20 years ago, this was important because courts were looking at it and, and people were saying, you know, well, guns are an important part of the American culture and the Americans had guns during the Revolutionary War and all of this. And some of the folks in the gun ban movement, academics, said, well, that's not true. And so Michael Bell Isle set out to prove that guns weren't actually part of the American culture. And it's all a fable. It's all something that came out of movies. It's actually not even true. So in point of fact, we don't have to put much credence into the Second Amendment. See, this is the basis of all this. The book was so well received with all this research that he was awarded the prestigious Bancroft Prize by Columbia University. The Bancroft, this is huge. It's a big deal. Belial was a professor at Emory University. The only problem was it didn't take long for it to start falling apart. He used fabricated research. In other words, he made it up. And then when people demanded to see his research, he says, oh, it got wet in a flood. I can't find it. But the, the excuses went on and on. Finally, Columbia University did something they'd never done before. They withdrew the Bancroft Prize from this book, Arming America. He ended up losing his job in disgrace. But what was interesting about the whole thing was all the rave reviews that this book got from within the academic com community. Why is that? Well, Clayton Kramer, a researcher, said, well, it's real easy. It's because even though it was all made up, it fit their bias. They wanted it to be true. He got rave reviews for this. Nobody looked at the research. Nobody said, let me see the research. No peer review. None of that. They wanted it to be true. They wanted it to be that guns were not important in America, that it was all a myth that the gun culture in America was completely made up and in fact bogus and in fact illegitimate. They always lie. When they tell you X number of children died, trust me, they're lying. They're including 18 and 19 year olds. They're including adults. They're including people who are in gangs who get killed in gang shootouts. They're including people who have murdered other people who got killed in the process of it. It's unbelievable what they do. Unbelievable. If you want real numbers, look to people or agencies like the FBI, the National Safety Council. You'll notice I don't list the NRA in there. I'm not going to, any more than you should believe the junk that comes from Bloomberg or Every Town or any of these other groups. Go to the source, look it up. It, it, there is a, an aggregator site for this, and it is sourced, so you can actually find, you know, if it was FBI or where it came from, go to uh, gunfacts.info, gunfacts.info. 
And when I say they lie, part of it is a condescension. Part of it is knowing, not even just thinking, knowing they can get away with it because we are just so darn stupid. Why would I say that? Well, I, you saw, I'm sure by now, the threesome on CNN this week where they're laughing at Trump supporters and can call them credulous boomer rubes. Idiots. Laughing at them and, and, and kicking into fake southern accents about how stupid we are. Anybody that would believe Trump or vote for Trump. Flashback to Barack Obama when he was running for office the first time or, or running for president. What did he say? He says, they get bitter, talking about you and me, and cling to their guns and their religion. They're bitter and they cling to their guns and their religion, dripping with condescension, elitism. And then we have, of course, no one can forget Hillary Clinton's basket of deplorables. Half of Trump voters, deplorable. Condescension, condescension, elitism. And, and just flat out saying, look, you guys are just dumb as a bag of hammers. And therefore they think, hey, we can put a fake piece of paper on our windshield and make people believe that I got a death threat. I could actually publish a book and get national awards for it, even though I made everything up, claiming that there is no legitimate gun culture in America. They always lie. And the media generally lets them get away with it. But we are the truth squad, and we call it out every time we see it. We never, ever let it go and just shrug. So the question is, what are you willing to do about it? What are you willing to do to help with this election coming up? I mean, I'm, this is not a rhetorical question. I'm, I'm looking for answers. Will you jump on board? I, I, need, I need some people. I need some volunteers. I need some people who say, yeah, I'll get up every morning. I'll spend 20 minutes on this a day. 866-TALK-GUN, because you know what? If we don't do it, I swear to you, there's a very good chance we lose. Are you in? On Gun Talk, the answer is always yes. Well, this is interesting. I was just talking about the uh, Arming America book, which was discredited 20 years ago. I've got a new one coming out, brand new be out. Uh, actually, it's out now. It came out January 28th. Alan Lichtman, Repeal the Second Amendment, the case for a safer America. Okay. Mm uh, no. Uh, but uh, you know what? There's at least somewhat a hint of honesty in the call, even if it's not in the support material, because it talks about there's a mass, sh I love it, in the Amazon uh right up on this. There's an average of one mass shooting per day in the United States. Well, that's a lie. According to the FBI, it's about 20 a year. So there's a big gap between 365 and 20. And the FBI says it's about 20 a year. So right off the bat, we're starting off with the lie. But as I say, they can't do this without lying. It really is that simple. Robert and Dan are with us. Uh, Robert, you're up first. Line three, Wasilla, Alaska. Hey, Robert. Yes, sir. Um, I think the idea of turning your guns into the gun shop for some people that may have, you know, issues where they feel like they have PTSD or something like that might be a good idea. But the, what scares me is warranted or unwarranted, if the government throws a red flag on you, you'll never get your guns back from the gun shop because you can't fill out the paperwork. Hmm. Interesting idea. Uh, obviously, um, details that have to be figured out. Um, but yeah, it depends on how the laws are written in that state, what the red flag is. Of course, with red flag, sometimes, depending on how it's set up, you go in, you could get that removed, in which case it wouldn't be a prohibition. But it is an interesting point, and it certainly is one worth looking at. Uh, Robert, I appreciate that. And that's why we talk about this, so people will bring out, okay, did you think about this? Thank you, sir. Let me talk to Dan, uh, line four, Front Royal, Virginia. Hey, Dan, what's on your mind? Well, um, I'm calling about, if we're talking about going out and doing something to make a difference mm -hmm. in this next election, uh, as a general rule, there's exceptions. 
the Democrats are the anti-gun party. The Republicans are the pro-gun party. Mm -hmm. And we need to... I, there's so many gun owners that I know who won't vote Republican, and I really? don't know why. And, there's, and the Republican Party already has a vehicle to do all the things you're talking about doing. We get out, we pound the streets, we go door to door, we, um, we run phone banks to get people out to vote. We have voter registration drives every place we can. Dan, how did you get involved in the Republican Party? I've been a Republican ever since high school. Yeah, but that's different from actually going and working. Because, I mean, you know, there are a lot of people say, yeah, I'm a Republican or I'm a this. But they're never out there working the phones or working the streets or putting up signs or doing all of that. What took you to that next level? Um, I got involved in uh, a uh, House of Delegates race in Virginia. Uh, I think you know the guy, Larry Pratt. Sure. This Larry Pratt, this was like 30 years ago. Uh -huh. he, he ran for the House of Delegates, and I worked on his campaign. And I've been working on campaigns ever since. There's something, this is going to sound really weird to some people, but you'll understand what I'm talking about. When you start doing this, there's obviously a sense of purpose and all of that, but there's actually something really enjoyable and purposeful about getting involved at this level, isn't there? There is. So you what know, is it? What, what, what is it that keeps you coming back and doing this year after year? It's a challenge, for one thing, and I enjoy talking to people. Okay. You know, uh, I, meet, I, I meet all kinds of people this way. You know, and you're... You kind of got this double-edged thing going for you right now because you're calling. You're in Virginia, where we just saw yeah. what happens when you don't show up. When you, what happens when you lose an election? When the Democrats take over? And I'm just going to put a fine point on it. You said that, but I wish it were not true. And mm -hmm. I know that there are a lot of good people who say, "Well, I'm you know my family's always been Democrat, but you need to get over it because the Democrat Party left you. If you're a gun owner, you have been left in the dust. And they and I don't. They say, "Well, you know, there are some good Democrats." Bottom line, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter because the leaders of the party are so virulently anti-gun and anti-gun owner that mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter if the person you are trying to support on the lower level, because when that person gets up there, Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer will tell them what to do and will have such leverage on them. They will do. They will do what they're told to do. And we're now at the point where if you want to support gun rights, I'm sorry it's this way, but you got to vote with the R's. You just have to. Uh -huh. Anything else is being childish. And I actually had people this week, Dan, telling me, well, you know, Donald Trump doesn't do anything for gun owners. I'm thinking, are you guys mental? Have you not been paying? Do you not know what's going on? And then I realized when I start listing them, they have no idea all the things he has done for gun owners. And they, they said, well, bump stocks this. Okay, I get it. Yes, he's not perfect. Nobody's perfect. But what do you want? You want Hillary Clinton? Do you want Beto O'Rourke? Do you want Joe Biden? Do you want... Uh, Bernie, I mean, give me a break. In my view, and I've been doing this a long time, Donald Trump is the best pro-gun president in 50 years. I agree. Yeah, and, and, and again, to your point, if we aren't on the streets or volunteering or making calls or writing a check and people go, well, I don't have, I don't have a lot of money. You don't have to have a lot of money. You got 25 bucks. Don't, don't go to Starbucks for a few times. you got 25 bucks right there. The party can use yep. it. But the other thing is, yep. and here's, the, here's the secret deal. <laughs> and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Once you make a donation to the party, you will now be informed because you're on the list. And they're going to keep you informed with what's going on. Otherwise, you're on the outside wondering what's going on and trying to figure it out from news reports. That's right. And the news reports are 95% biased. Yes. Yes, on a good day. Exactly right. Look, I appreciate the call, sir. You make excellent points. We've got to be there. We've got to get people signed up. We have to get them registered to vote. And you have to build your core group. It may be two of you. It may be four of you. It may be six of you. And you say, I'm going to go to the sanctuary meetings. I'm going to go to the legislature. I'm going to go to the gun shows. We're going to set up a booth at gun shows. We're going to register people to vote. We're going to make sure they're there. We're going to build these lists. And then we're going to call them and make sure that they're doing the early voting. 
You know what? We win with that. He may have billions of dollars, but we got millions of people. And in the end, nobody counts the dollars. They count the votes. That's how we win. 866-TALK-GUN. It's America's favorite 22 rifle. No matter how, where, or what you like to shoot, there's a Ruger 1022 for you. From the carbine to the incredible takedown models, the tactical and target versions, all Ruger 1022 models have a legendary action and detachable 10 round rotary magazine. Whether you're hunting squirrels or tin cans, there's a lifetime of fun in every Ruger 1022 rifle. See them all at Ruger.com. That's Ruger.com. You got your carry permit, and that's good. But you know you could use more training. Get the DVDs, which have what you need. Springfield Armory presents Concealed Carry 1 and Concealed Carry 2 with Bata Group. Learn specific concealed carry skills from Top Gun fighting trainers. Get trained. Be prepared. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com that's shopguntalk.com. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. I guess I have to stop looking at guns online and come back and do this. <laughs> Welcome back. Tom Gresham, 866-TALK-GUN will get you in here. If you have a range report, we'd love to have that. You've been shooting anything? You've been looking at anything? been buying anything? Oh, I just got my... Um, New Ruger number one in 280 actually improved. Have not had a chance to shoot it yet. Uh, so I've, I've been spending a lot of time online looking up the loads and looking up the thing. It's you know it's a 280. 280s are really good. It's just the actually improved version, 40 degree shoulder, no longer a Wildcat because nozzles are made in a factory cartridge. You get about 100, maybe 150 feet per second more out of it. Uh, why? I don't know. I can't justify it. I just like it. <laughs> That's as good a reason as any, isn't it? Uh, let's go talk to Tony on five out of Spokane, Washington. Uh, hey, uh, Tori, that is. Hey, Tori, how you doing? Uh, good. How you doing? Great. Thank you. What's on your mind? Well, the, the statement that you made that that uh, Bloomberg had made er, earlier on the show. Right. To me, that sounds like he's reaching out to people who are planning on mass, sh mass shooters and say, hey, if you vote for me. I'm going to give you an extra 68 minutes of shooting time because I'm going to take everybody's guns away and they have to wait for the police officer to come to stop you from shooting. Well, where, where Bloomberg said that uh, we can't have average citizens carrying guns in crowded places, it is the, the law enforcement's job to carry guns and to decide when to shoot. And your point, which is excellent, which is, Average time for an officer to get to the scene is something on the order of six to nine minutes. If you're lucky, sometimes it's 15 minutes. I mean, they, they can get there in three or four, but if somebody's there shooting people and if they shoot them somebody every five seconds, that's an awful lot of people who get shot while you're waiting for somebody who's wearing the right kind of clothes to show up. Yeah, it is. I mean, he's, he's promoting the, for the evil people to do something at more because it's, you know, it's, they, they can't stop the drugs coming in from this country. So they had to find something new to, to go after, and they go after guns. Well, what when they take away our guns, what's going to come come in on top of those piles of drugs coming in? Guns well, I, I, you, you'll, you'll notice that Michael Bloomberg has not gone anywhere in the last 40 years without having armed guards all around him. I'm not, not talking about one or two. I'm talking about a half a dozen armed guards with him everywhere he goes. So he's not willing to subject himself to the same risk that he wants everybody else to, to take on. So it's a great point, Tori. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your call. I do have a range report. Here we go. Line one. Franco's with us out of Iowa. Franco, what did you go shoot? 
Well, I don't know if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you recall, uh, but I called in a while back. I drive truck and I drive. I get to drive by Brownells twice a day, four days a week. And I went in and found an uh, uh, IWI Tabor, flat dark earth, the X95. Nice. It would be expensive to me if I went by Brownells all the time. It just would. <laughs> I'm telling you. But um, I, I got a little crow to eat, and I learned a lesson, and the lesson sounds like a joke in itself. I'll go with yeah. the lesson first. Uh, think twice before you second guess buying a gun. <laughs> okay. What I, happened? Um, I had a branch fall on both of my vehicles, totaling one. I... I uh, I was going to get the gun. I learned that Brownells has 25% down, and then uh, uh, you got two weeks to pay it off. And I, I'm, I was going to be buy it 24 hours later. And the eating crow, as I told you, that I bought it. Um, I had to get home, and and knew, knowing that my check from the insurance company was there. Well, 24 hours later, I go in, and it's gone. And I was in shock for weeks. Oh no! <laughs> and it was a seven hundred dollar lesson because it was a it was eleven forty nine at Brownells, and I had to pay seventeen fifty plus tax for my local gunslinger to get it for me, and I had to wait a long time. But man, is that a smooth shooter, and it is just so cool. Oh, it's just the neatest gun. Uh, I also have a question. I have a sight mark, uh, red dot that I already right. had, and I. I think it, I think it's a takeaway from a Trigicon. Okay. The, the original Trigicon, but um, yeah, the rifle has really cool pop-up sights that you can't even see them, but right. they, uh, the iron sights will pop up, uh, and it co-witnesses with that sight mark. But I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm having to lift the stock quite a ways up. You know, like only the bottom half of the stock is on my shoulder. Oh, but to it, see it, through it, the red it, dot? Yeah, so I'm wondering, do I need to move it away from me farther down the rifle? Or, well, or, you know what? You what? Can, the nice part of it is you can experiment. Just run it down the uh, rails, put it up there, see if that helps you. Uh, I take it the sight must be mounted fairly high, and you're having to kind of hold your head off the stock. Is that what's going on? Yeah, the, the sights pop up and out of the Picatinny rail, and they're like uh, almost two inches tall. Yeah, that's um, high. Now, what you could do is you could uh, put some type of a pad on the top of the stock, on the cheek piece. And believe it or not, it's going to sound weird, uh, for years and years, what a lot of people have done is they go to the store and get Dr. Scholl's, Dr. Scholl's moleskin, that sticky stuff. Okay, sure. Yes. And yep. just, just lay several strips of that up on top, build it up. And first of all, just see if that works for you, if you like it. Then if it does... There are other, like, made-for-guns pads, sticky pads you can put on there and build it up. They actually have adjustable heights because what you would really like is when you shoulder that gun and you put your cheek down on it uh, with your eyes closed, you open your eyes, and you're looking right through the red dot. So that's what you're you're striving for. But try it with these. Just stick on Dr. Scholl's. See if you can get it where you want it to go. If you can't, then you might want to do a little shopping and see if you can find a red dot that mounts a little bit lower because it may be that the base and all that that's on is building it up a little bit high. But, look, I appreciate great range report and a lesson to all of us. When you find that gun in the store, say, I'll, I'll come back tomorrow for it, you know, and maybe it's there and maybe it's not. I actually found one not too long ago. Same deal. I actually said, well, I'll buy that later. I drove back home. I pulled into my drive my driveway, and I thought, you big dummy. And I didn't even shut off the car. I turned around and went back to the store and bought it on the spot. Got a used gun. I didn't know if it was going to be there when I got back, so I got me a 44 Special single action, and I am delighted. I'm not really big on the whole delayed gratification thing anyway. Let's go straight to Cedar City, Utah, where Brad has joined us with some news of the things that are going on out in Utah. Hey, Brad, you have the floor. What's going on out there, man? Well, I am happy to announce that here in the state of Utah that we have a rally coming up. It's called the Utah Freedom Rally. This is a Second Amendment-based rally to take place February 8th, 2020, which is this Saturday, <clears throat> at 11 a.m. at the state capitol building. 
Okay, it's this Saturday, February 8th, 11 a.m. at the State Capitol Building. So what's going on when you get there? Basically, it's going to be a lot like what they did in Virginia. Basically, just a uh, peaceful display of people coming out to support the Second Amendment. Well, you know the problem, and we've, we've seen it at other places where if people don't feel threatened, they don't show up. And obviously, they did. They showed up in Virginia, but it was a little bit late. In Utah, I think there are a lot of people there who don't actually think there's anybody out trying to take their gun rights. Yes, that's correct, and that's why I decided, and I'm glad I had the opportunity to to uh, talk about this on your show. And there was a point that, that was made on your show earlier which I think makes a lot of sense, is when people, just like you say, they don't feel threatened, they won't take any action. Right. And I I agree with you when you say when you're comfortable, it's still a good time to take action. Don't wait till it's an uncomfortable situation. Well, if, if you wait, the problem here is if you wait until you lose, you have lost. I mean, look at Virginia. I mean, they've got the Democrats in, and they are passing gun control laws all this past week. Bang, 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 one after another. And you're thinking, well, gee, why didn't we do anything? Well, because you didn't show up. If you want to not have to fight a, you know, from a losing position, you show up by the thousands and the tens of thousands, and you send a clear message, and then you do it every single year. You got to be involved. I mean, th this is the call. Are, are you involved in the organization of this? Um, I'm not involved in the organization. However, I'm going to go in support of it, definitely. Excellent. Well, how are you spreading the word inside the state? Uh, basically, uh, we're putting up flyers in, in all the gun shops, uh, also like a, what I've done here on your radio show. Uh, a Good lot deal. of uh, the organizations, like there's a Utah Shooting Sports Council who is also spreading the word, basically forums like that. Okay, good deal. Yeah, and everybody share it everywhere you can, social media, talk to everybody. Talk to the person who is in front of you and behind you in the checkout line, you know, at Walmart or any other place. I mean, literally everybody you can and just say, hey, are you going to the Freedom Rally? I mean, I would just bring it up. I mean, what's the worst they can say is, I don't want to talk about that. Okay, cool. But you may find people say, well, I don't know what what is that. And then all of a sudden, boom, you're off to the races. You have to get over the fear of being rejected because you have to understand that in your heart you're right in this deal and that's when we start stepping out brad thank you so much for letting us know about this i had seen the reports of it and i had not gotten to do sharing the news so for those in utah february 8th that is this coming saturday 11 a.m at the state capitol the freedom rally you got to be there i mean it's like don't be one of those who say i didn't know about it or i had something else going or gee i didn't know and here's the deal this is true. Just believe me on this. I didn't realize that Bloomberg's people were in there at the state legislature working the halls. I didn't realize that they were in there saying, well, you know, this is just for the children. And actually, gun owners really do want more gun control because we've done the polls and they really do want universal background checks. They really do want gun confiscation. They really do want us to make it a criminal act to loan a gun to a friend for the weekend. And that's what they're being told. That's going on right now. If you don't show up, if you don't have the other voice, if you don't speak up loudly, the legislators are left. Legislators are left to think, well, I, yeah, I guess that's all we've heard from it. We never hear from the other. Show up, stand up, show up, speak up, or shut up. Simple as that. Eight six six, talk gun. Are you willing to get involved?